Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hello, everybody. It's me, Lady Ada. I'm that engineer. This is a part of the Ask an Engineer, and I'm the one. With me is Mr. Lady Ada. Hello. Not an engineer, but engineer assistant. No. And knows as much as I most just, engineers. I just hang out here. At this point, I just work here. Pretty good. I just work here. Knows about capacitors. I just work here. Uh, and uh, just works here doing camera control, answering questions, managing the show. We got an exciting show for tonight. We're broadcasting live from the downtown Manhattan Adafruit headquarters. We do all the design, testing, shipping, manufacturing, writing, coding, documentations, videos for all the electronic goodies that you love to use in your projects and your cosplays and your Halloween props and all that good stuff. Ooh, I'm so excited. We got a, some good electronic news coming up today on the show. Mr. Lady, why don't you tell them what's on tonight's show? On tonight's show, the code is X chapters. We'll talk about why the code is X chapters very soon. It's ten percent off in the Adafruit store all the way up until eleven fifty nine p.m. Eastern time. It gets ten percent off everything in stock except for gift certificates, Ada Box, and Code Academy courses. It supports us, an open source hardware company, one hundred percent woman owned and VC free and loan free. And we have all sorts of things like four hundred one k and benefits and paid day off for voting and paid day off for charities and all of those things. It's only possible when you buy something in the store. So thank you so much for doing that. And Yay. save a buck or two. Show and tell people around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady will talk about who is on the show and tell and more. John Park's workshop. We're going to have a little preview of what's going on in JP's workshop and also a Make Code Minute. Have some Python on hardware news. Some posts from our jobs board, jobs.adafruit.com, where you can post up a job or your skills if you're looking for something. Time travel, walk around the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. Also talk about some things like our guides. 3D printing, some cool projects from Noam Pedro. Some Adafruit factory footage, got some new products, got some top secret. We'll answer your questions. We do that over in Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. That's where you do it. Join 16,000 of us over there. All that and more on Ask an Engineer. Yay! All right. So let's uh, let's get started. Do this Don't thing. The code is X chapters. It is not case sensitive, but that's just easier to remember it that way. X chapters. Um, when you shop at our store, you get free stuff. That's true. Can I tell them about it? Yep. Yay! Uh, when you order at the Adafruit.com shop, we give you free stuff with your order. This is useful stuff. Stuff that you will use or you can give away as gifts, and the giftee will be very appreciative unlike a fruitcake. $99 or more, you get a free half-size Permaproto. It's the same size and shape as a solderless breadboard. So you can take your solderless breadboard project, solder it onto the Permaproto, and now it's a permanent prototype. So handy. That's free with your order when you uh, put $99 or more into your cart. $199 or more, you'll get free UPS ground shipping. That's uh, high quality, trackable, insured shipping in the continental United States. It's our preferred domestic shipping partner because uh, it has a really good chance of getting to you at the time it says it's gonna get to you. More about that later. And $299 or more, you get a free Circuit Playground Express, our all-in-one premier development board. It's a great way to learn programming, coding, making electronics without any soldering. It's that round board in the center there. It's got two buttons, switches, um, capacitive touch pads, 10 NeoPixel LEDs. It can run Arduino 
Arduino, CircuitPython, Code.org, CS Discoveries, MakeCode, MakerBlocks, MicroLisp, TeenyGo. It's got a bunch of sensors and speakers and stuff built in. So uh, a great deal and free when you purchase more than $299 in the Adafruit shopping cart. Okay, and then uh, just a reminder, UPS, ground that's way to go, postal, Good that's way a to fun go. mystery sometimes. Ooh, mystery. And then DHL. Good international. If, um, you want to have it shipped international. If you're in New York City, you can get your delivery same day here in New York City. Just check out before 11 a.m. And if it's a zip code that we can get it to you, you'll see that on checkout. All right, show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing their stuff. Lady Ada, who's on the show and tell this week and what did they share? I'm glad you asked. We had Melissa from the Adafruit uh, what, Northwest team, Northwest team, yeah. uh, come by. Uh, and she added more shapes to the CircuitPython display library. So shut off some shapes like triangles and stars and polygons, that's good stuff, lines as well. Uh, also did a bunch of display work this week. So you'll, everyone will see a nice sprucing up of all of our display libraries. Phil B uh, showed off a cool demo of making uh, foam chain mail using EVA foam that's woven together, much lighter, much easier to make than metal chain mail. Maybe spray paint it with metallic uh, spray paint. It could look really good. Brian uh, is working on a uh, sip and puff pressure sensor using the STM32 F405 Feather uh, plugged into an OLED display and then the matching ST LPS33 HW sensor. So these are sensor, this is a sensor that can measure um, pressure and it's used for barometric pressure sensor, but it's also great for measuring uh, human pressure that you make with your mouth. So you can sip by like sucking on a straw or puff by blowing into a straw, then that straw is connected to the pressure sensor and you can measure it to make assistive technology or just cool new interfaces, right? Not just joysticks yeah. and buttons, but using um, your mouth to control something. I'll tell you the project I'm looking forward to doing. Yeah. So we're doing this web serial stuff. Yeah. And I thought it'd be really neat to use a sip and puff and you'd uh, blow into the tube and then a balloon on your, your screen would get bigger yeah, you have to, like, or smaller. Blow up yeah, the balloon. I thought it'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. All Coming right. soon. Um, JP is working on a new guide project. It's a pretty big project. It's going to take a week or two to come out called Piloton, and it builds on the last four weeks of Bluetooth projects that we've been doing. We've got heart rate monitor, cadence and speed bicycle monitor, and Apple Music service uh, connectivity. So this is a uh, cool clue-based um, bicycle computer that you can use to connect to uh, if you have a bicycle with like a cadence or wheel speed monitor it'll display that and then it'll also get heart rate d data and display it also it can display what music you're playing on your iOS device and maybe we'll even use the buttons to go to the forward or back track so it's like an all-in-one bicycle computer um, and he'll show off a little bit of it tomorrow it's still in progress uh, but you can check it out on JP's workshop as we are building Piloton Python powered smart bike computers yeah. Talk about that soon. Let's talk about that soon. Thanks, Blinka. Um, Nona Pedro came by. They did a, a Valentine's theme project this week. It is Valentine's Day this week. Uh, it's using the new LED plastic that really does a good job of uh, diffusing LEDs. It's a NeoPixel heart necklace. And they're also working on some clue cases, like a watch case, and they built that bicycle mount case as well. We have from the community, Liz uh, is, uh, just finished a guide on her BLE synth, which was with cool LEDs in the speaker. And now she's working on, I think, like a CircuitPython accelerometer MIDI combo project where she's kind of simulating a mod wheel or like a tempo pitch change um, using accelerometer and uh, USB MIDI with CircuitPython. Drew and Helen came by with an update. The Oshawa badge has working buttons now, so that's coming along. Helen uh, made a cool embroidered uh, synth punk, like LM. 317 or whatever, yeah, cool. punk synthesizer, all embroidered, sounded really cool, nice work with that, had a nice big speaker. Alex Glow has been uh, working on making some robots and she's trying out Cricut and she's really digging it. And then she wants to maybe make it um, edge badge controlled so you can yeah. control this At the At the end of uh, Alex's voice. Uh, show and tell, the cool thing is Alex said pretty much what we set out to do with Cricut was like it make it really easy to do robotics because you kind of reinvent the wheel, sometimes literally, every time you do a robotics project. Like, okay, I'm going to have to do a power supply thing. I'm going to have to do this server thing. You have to redo it over and over and over, and you never get to the actual robot you wanted to build. Yeah. And it was cool to see Alex uh, do that. Alex is one of like two or three people right now, Jorvan and then um, uh, uh, Jella, 
online that people know because they're doing companion bots. One was like um, one's like a friend, little friend bot, and another one's like a little dragon. And then uh, Alex had an owl, and now she's working on another one. So really neat, and I think that's going to be a, a trend where it's like, like okay, everybody has a phone. Who cares? Doesn't matter. We all have pretty much the same phone. Yeah. Look, look triangle. Um, or maybe, ooh, like square, you know, like maybe that's the two differences of, of what a phone might look like. Um, but a companion bot, that's where it's at. I, that's where it's at. Yeah, okay. And then Expo came by uh, and did some Maker Straight to show off a coming soon project in progress uh, DIY NeoPixel safety goggle science fiction yeah, cool. uh, glasses thing uh, in progress. Uh, it's using a clue, and maybe they'll come back next week to show us part two of the project. Okay. All participants in the show and tell get an ask you on the show and tell sticker. Email support at adafruit.com. We'll send you one. And if you're a kid, please have a guardian like entity email us. Part of our Adafruit live series of shows tomorrow, JP is going to be doing at JP's workshop. It is at 4 p.m. Eastern time. It is the most fun you can have in about a half an hour or so. Last week, uh, JP was working on the bicycle project. Part one of the Peloton. So yeah. you're getting getting that data. Now we're going to display it. Yeah. Now we're going to improve on it. And we'll talk about that in some of the other uh, projects and more tonight. But um, every week there's a Make Code Minute. We just sent out the Make Code newsletter. We're already up to 1,000 subscribers. So if it's you the to, biggest Make Code newsletter. It is. It's the biggest, it's the biggest most popular Make Code newsletter. No um, question. It's also the only one right now. Um, so we're already up to 1,000 subscribers, which is, like, really fast. And uh, you can get it at adafruitdaily.com. Um, one of the things that we do, um, which is what we don't do, is we will never harvest your emails or spam. So when you go to adafruitdaily.com, we wanted to have it separate from your store account. You know, you go to a website and it has a big thing that pops up real fast. And you're like, sign up for a newsletter. Or if you order something from a store, now you're on every newsletter forever. Or, like, you put something in your cart and you go away on the site and it sends you an email and says, hey, you still have something in your cart. Hate it. You're not going to do it. We don't do that. That's weird tracking. People Terrible. should not shop at stores that do that. No. Um, we don't. So when we did a newsletter system, we said, let's have it completely separate. So it's, it's very clear. It has nothing to do with your Adafruit shopping account. So adafruitdaily.com, if you want to sign up for the Make Code newsletter, it's there. While you're at it, maybe sign up for other ones like Python newsletter. You can uh, subscribe and unsubscribe instantly. Instantly. So anyways, the Make Code Minute that JP does. He's doing a new one this week. Here's last week's. Take it away. For the Make Code Minute today, what I wanted to do was show you how you can run a grid, an external grid of NeoPixels from a Circuit Playground Express and use the buttons in order to light up different rows of this grid. So you can see here, I'm pressing my A and B button on the Circuit Playground Express and I can either page through these rows or I can flip the switch and I can dance through them a little more slowly so you can watch each one light up separately. Uh, so the way I set this up inside of Make Code, I have a few things. First, in the uh, start block, what I do is I set an external strip on A4 pin and I set that up with 64 pixels. It's an 8x8. Eight eight. Then I set this variable called the pixel position and I set it at zero. And that's actually the upper left corner of this uh, NeoPixel. Uh, and then I call this function that I created called light row. And what light row does is first it sets all the pixels to blue. That's kind of like our background. Then it loops through eight times and it sets the strip pixel color to red at whatever the pixel position is. And the first uh, pixel we get is that first pixel there, pixel zero. It lights up. Then we increase that variable by one and repeat it. So this happens eight times. We also check the switch to see if the switch is left or right. We're going to run quickly or we're going to put a little pause in between. And then the last things we do is when I press the A button or the B button, I'm calling one of these functions. If it's bar down, then I check to make sure I haven't run off to the end of the strip. I, I make sure I'm under or at 56. And then I call that light row. If we hit the a button, we go backwards, and that means that we're going to check to make sure that we're not two rows from the beginning, and then we subtract 16. So when we've drawn out to the end and we want to go up a row, we jump that value up two rows, or two full rows, essentially, the beginning of the row above, and then draw those eight pixels. Uh, and so that is how you can create a little light show like this on a NeoPixel grid, an external grid, using the Circuit Playground Express and coded inside of Make Code. And that is your Make Code Minute. 
Okay, and don't forget, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, check out all of our social media places and all the places that play videos. John Park's workshop is tomorrow. Okay, um, let's... Uh, Let's do this. It it's is Python on hardware time. Blinka time. Lots of Blinka. Lots of Blinka. Lots of MicroPython. Lots of CircuitPython. Lots All of Python. here. So, um, as we had said before, the big news, which we will be talking about every single week, all the way up until April fifteenth, is <laughs> so get um, used to it. Get today, <laughs> like you know, this is this is the subscription service you signed up for. Um, a to streaming network. The clue will be at PyCon. So everyone gets a clue. You got a clue. Um, this is brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Yay! Over 3,000 people are going to get clues. Um, the logo that PyCon happens to have works out really well if you have a bunch of clues because you, mm. uh, <laughs> you could just take the graphic and put it on each clue. And we're doing a bunch of photos because it's just fun. Um, cause that's what you could do with clues. Look how fun this is. I'm having fun. Mm. Um, and, uh, I wanted to say thank you again to DigiKey, um, in particular for bringing Python on hardware to so many people. Um, one thing that I'll say as, as a, as a partner, um, I noticed some things. So I was watching Pi Cascades, the live streaming. Um, this is one of the coolest like Python events. Um, cause it's like event season. So PyCon, you know, we're having clues there coming up very soon and then uh, Scott was at uh, Pi Cascades I'll talk about that in a second but um, just to give a uh, little you know hug, we call them hug reports to DigiKey so people now when they talk about electronics they notice that DigiKey has been a partner and they're like if you're going to choose hardware go to the DigiKey site and that's how this all stuff this is how this happens when people ask us like oh like you know, tell us about these partnerships that you do. Tell us about these things that you do. It's like, well, how do you get people to uh, say, like, oh, like, this is my supplier now. So some stuff you get from Adafruit, but Adafruit's not going to sell you, like, uh, like LED, individual LEDs or components or resistors. It makes no sense. And so this is kind of neat. So congratulations to uh, DigiKey and to the Python community, because I feel like this was, like, a really nice match made in component heaven. So <laughs> really neat. Um, so speaking of, Scott did a talk, Computing's next decade and everyone um this is uh the end one of the last slides watch the whole thing this is really neat not only because scott did an excellent talk about where can we take python and, and computing together uh -huh. um, with everyone but um it was neat to see uh scott's history of computers um scott got a dell yeah like for christmas it was cool. yeah it was really neat so uh check out his talk it was excellent uh this is from joey uh joey got a clue and he so he said, the clue is a bike mountable commuter computer I've always dreamed of. Circuit Python powered connection to an iPhone for weather reports, reminders, and turn by turn directions, plus tons of environmental sensors, including ambient noise on board. Such a cool product. So, this was one of the projects that we started to work on like right away. Like, it was the same it's just bike. funny. He, it's, it's another bicycle computer. It's not Piloton, but yeah. it's very similar. And so, we're doing this Piloton thing where we're like, okay, cool. You could take like a garbage, trash, stationary bike or any bike and then turn it into like a very advanced IoT bike that does lots of things and sensors. And uh, that's why we, you know, this is our parody. This is haha, -ha, funny, funny. It's Piloton. We're, but, not, going, we're not going public. <laughs> but it's uh, still a really nice bike computer. Yeah. And so we wanted to have a really nice bike computer for, you know, under 30 bucks that could do all this stuff. Um, other news that's going on in the world of Python and hardware Blinka continues to snake its way to the Open Hardware Badge. So the Open Hardware Summit is coming up pretty soon. If you want to go to it, you might want to check out Open Hardware Summit site. Um, Blinka is running. Drew showed it on the show and tell. We've been posting this. I will continue to put up photos. Look, Ripples. Ripples on things. And we're doing so much work with Bluetooth and the NRF2840. Yeah, you'll be able to do a lot. You're going to do a lot because all these demos, like the Peloton, they're all going to work on um, the open source hardware badge because it's actually really similar to Clue in many ways. It's not the yeah. exact same sensors, but it's the same chip and the same display, yeah. same Bluetooth. So you're going to be able to take advantage of all these awesome Clue projects if you go to the Open Source Hardware Summit. Okay. Other people are getting their clues. And what's the first thing you're doing? Let's make a cap touch photo viewer. Now, you don't need to plug it in USB. It could be battery. This is it starting up. And then, look, there's the Adafruit logo. And as you touch the edge, look at all these photos that you can do. Yay. Ready? And it's even faster. We actually just yeah. merged in an update so this is from to speed Steam the Tokyo. screen. Check it out. OK. More stuff going on. This is a cool Pi game. Running on Pi Gamer. Okay. So if you want to learn how to make video games and you want to make them in Python, you can do that 
Bye, bye gamer. Is this a collector cat? Yeah, the winner's you. Okay. You, you want to count. Yeah. Um, this is the storm glass thing. This is using Circuit, Playground, Express, uh, sorry, Blue Fruit, and also a bunch of cool stuff to make this effect. You have to check out the Hector Guide and more. Congratulations to, I guess, our sister. And so I don't know what Big sister, is. yeah. Our snake sister. Um, MicroPython got 10,000 stars on GitHub. Yay. I think we're like at 1,000 or so. What are we? Yeah, like 1,500 yeah. or something. 1,500? Okay. Um, Melbourne MicroPython meetup happened. Check out uh, the links in our newsletter and also on their site. There was an excellent talk, the MicroPython Garbage Collector, and Matt presented the MicroPython news that was going on. Other stuff, this is from uh, Oshpark, and these are a bunch of Blinkas uh, made with the Flex PCBs, and this is Deshipu's design with the PCB uh, pins that are made with the Flex that now mm. Oshpark can do. Cool IoT project. Um, this is Mohib's uh, project that's a Pi Portal connected to an AWS cloud project using CircuitPython. This is another uh, version. This is Ion of uh, the IoT cloud badge powered by CircuitPython running on a Pi badge. There's now a side NeoPixel strip on the lanyard. This is uh, the talk that I think Maria is going to be giving in April, and it's about uh, plants with CircuitPython, and this is called Planteris. Ooh. And it'll give you the status of It's a things. happy plant. Yeah. Here's a bunch of kids with Circuit Playground Expresses. Here is the latest updates for Snack. There's um, first the, um, well, first it's the open hardware Python microcontroller for Lego, and it uses Snack and also it's CircuitPython. You can run CircuitPython. There's a sensor kit that was added, and you can also um, take a look at the lessons that Keith is putting up on CrowdSupply. If you like cheer lights, well, you can use the NRF 52840 and the Feather Express with an airlift to get the current cheer light uh, colors via JSON. Um, it advertises them via BLE. The colors displayed on the itsy bitsy NRF 52840 and a Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. Next up, we posted up our heart rate monitor project. You'll be able to check out that on learn.adafruit.com. Bill, AT Makers, has some updates to the Freedom Wing case. This allows you to use a power wheelchair as an Xbox controller. The, um, the uh, latest update is this case that Bill's working on. It's a nice case. Yeah. Green. Um, the folks over at, um, I think it's Electro Maker, are doing a contest and you can win a giant board. Ooh. And very simple, you just come up with a unique project idea that incorporates a giant board, submit your idea, Use 150 words. Once you receive your board, you can start building your project. It's that easy. Nice way to get some free boards. And then, of course, it's running Linux. It's so powerful. Yeah. It has Blinka. And it's Feather Format. It's for the format. Use all of our Feather Wings. And it's Feather Format. And it's Feather Format. Speaking of Feather, this is a PoE Feather Wing. This is an Ethernet Feather Wing with 4 watts of power over Ethernet power and a unique MAC address that's going to be coming out on CrowdSupply. This is kind of cool. Um, someone did a Freedom of Information Act, and they got 400 pages of the Python instructional course at the NSA. That's kind of neat. That's Secret Snake. Right now, this very second, or close to, at the Artist Asylum, there is a meetup for Circuit Python. Brent's there. Dan's there. Lucian's there. And they're having a good time. They're having fun. They Bill might even Somerville. be watching. They might, well, maybe they're watching this on their phone and not talking to each other. Maybe they're Who Mary's eating Swan Lake Chow Chow that I don't get to have. Could be. And then coming up, there's a Circuit Python workshop. Um, and uh, get the details in the newsletter and more. Um, it is coming up on the uh, Makerspace, and I have to find which campus this is. I think I have put this in events, so it's in here somewhere. Um, it's at Amherst, it's at UMass Amherst, um, February 13th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., the Makerspace in the Astronomy Building. We are seeing lots of. Whoa, this of is a lot of like Mass U, Massachusetts. I'm from Massachusetts, so this is good for me. This is working out. It's working for my team. It's working out. Blinka, blinka, blinka. Wicked. Yeah. Wicked okay. blinka. So help wanted. Um, this is kind of cool. We have jobs.adafruit.com, and there are a ton of jobs. These are just the three most recent ones. There's a firmware engineer role for Bear Conductive. Probably familiar with them. Cool. There's someone looking for a BLE low energy device 
using MQT to AWS. Hey, we just have a guy on that using Circuit Python. Yeah, you, you could can, read the guy and then just charge him. And then maybe um, and then a back end web developer, software engineer for Teneco and Brooklyn. They're New also York. doing Bluetooth yeah. energy, maybe Circuit Python. So this might right. work out for you. Time travel. Let's look around the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. Um, first up, uh, it's coming up on Valentine's Day, and uh, we love you. Um, we have a guide. So if you go to, Ad or we have a gift guide, go to adafruit.com and then uh, hit gift guide, gift ideas, and you'll see the latest one we just. Oh, nice. Yeah, because it's coming out. We have that cool gift guide system now. Yeah, we can make gift guides easy. Yeah. Uh, adafruit.com slash explore. I remember that. We are an open source hardware company. And before we talk about our 2,130 guides, I do want to mention something. One, okay. you know I said we're a 100% woman-owned company? That's before. me. Yeah. And you know how I said we're an open source hardware company? That's true. And we're also an open source hardware. Uh, you, okay. We're open source hardware, software, and woman-owned company. Yes. Now, today I had, to, I had an email exchange with a friend of the company. Yes. And what's funny is I think they assumed that because we were woman-owned that we got a tax break or people uh, had to buy stuff from us or they were encouraged to buy stuff or from grants us or, or there was grants or, or there was something. None. Zero. Never. We've never gotten anything for being 100% woman owned. In fact, there is um, a uh, like small business certification. There's a woman owned business certification. Yeah. And you know what? We make too much money. So they said, don't even bother. Yeah. So um, I could tell you as uh, your, your partner running these things, it's been 10 times harder to be a 100% woman-owned manufacturing company yeah. in the U.S. Um, we have no loans, no venture capital, and we're successful, we're profitable. I just ran a bunch of numbers for our, our, our year-end stuff. That's right, you got to pay taxes. And we're doing good. And we're paying taxes. Um, we're, we're doing good, and, and I, know, I know there's parts of the industry that are not, but um, we've never gotten any benefits at all from anyone anywhere in any way because... It's 100% woman-owned. I think that actually people think that that's true. There's no, there's no there's benefit. There's nothing you get. Anything. We, didn't, we don't have anything for being you a You think that there's something? There's nothing. We you have get. nothing for being a manufacturer in New York City. So there's like this whole like, oh, like manufacturer in the U.S. We want to help you. No, you don't. No, not There really. is no benefit to this. We're doing this because it's not easy. We're doing this because it's hard. And not to just like JFK on this, but like this is hard. And that's why we're doing it. Because if we can do this in New York City, woman-owned company, you know what? No one else has an excuse. So I'm going to send this link to my friend. Okay. Okay. We have, uh, anyways, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Okay. Um, we have 2,130 guides. Lots, What's on the big board this week, Lady Ada? Lots of guides this week. I got started early, so we got through a bunch of these. I think, let's see. I think uh, we start with image wireless transfer for Circuit Playground uh, E-Ink. So we uh, had a guide before on how to do uh, TFT gizmo wire transfer. We did that for AdaBox where you could, um, and of course you can use it with Clue or whatever. You can um, transfer images um, from an uh, iPhone or an Android device using our app. So which one are you, which one are you the on? wireless image transfer, the Yank e display. Okay, got it. Um, and now we have that for the Yank e gizmo as well, which is cool because you can load any image onto your mobile device. And when you transfer it, it will do like the dithering for you automatically. So it comes out looking really good on your Yank e display. We have from Liz Clark, her BLE synth with the Feather NRF2840 Circuit Playground Blue Fruits. This is neat because the keyboard has a feather and then it sends the notes it's playing over wirelessly to the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit and then that is what plays the notes on the little speaker the, um, on the right there. So it's like a, a Bluetooth synth that doesn't use like audio Bluetooth, it does data. Okay, we also have from uh, Dano, and Isaac and um, I think probably Isaiah also helped out uh, a how to build a testing jig. Um, you know, we have uh, folks here who have to test boards. How do we do that? We make testing jigs so that every single board we make, for example, the Stemma Mini GPS gets tested. And how do we do that? Well, we have a guide. And the reason we publish this is because we're an open source hardware company. We want other companies who have to do this to learn from what we've learned on how to make testing jigs that are really fast no and really efficient. talks about how they make testers. It's, it's, when you do electronics, and you, a lot of people, you know, they send it off to China. Um, a lot of things that people don't talk about or think about because the testers are the last thing pe people do. It's a whole other product that you're yeah. making that you never ship. 
that's responsible for all the products that you're shipping. But so, we have to make sure they're yeah. perfect. So we do have to test every product. So yeah. this shows you also we sell all the components. So if you're if you're making even if you're doing like you know a, a people doing conference badges, you're making more than ten or twenty of something. Making a jig is going to really help you because you can automatically program, automatically test. So we show you how to use like clamps and pogo pins and how to design the PCB and how to put it together. Um, we also have the Introducing Adafruit Clue Guide that Katni put together, um, and we'll be adding more to this as well. This is just, you know, showing for the Alpha Clue boards, we're actually going out of Alpha very soon. We're pretty much, we've gotten all the feedback, we found all the little bugs that we made, and we're going to um, do the final release candidate, uh, you know, the next couple weeks. Um, uh, and this guide is, we'll tell you the pinouts, um, how to load CircuitPython, how to load Arduino code. It has some example code as well. Um, and we're also adding some projects in CircuitPython um, that we'll talk about uh, in the next coming weeks. You'll see little mini projects that use the display and the sensors to, to maybe make a humidity monitor or a level, uh, spirit level sensor, um, kind of a, a visual uh, spirit level. So um, a lot of stuff coming with Clue. So this guide is going to be filled out more and more. But if you picked up a Clue and you have the alpha version, you want to know how to get Arduino CircuitPython running, check out that guide. From Erin, uh, she did two. She did um, this like beautiful, colorful, networked circuit playground plus NeoPixel um, fairy bottles. She loves these fairy bottles, and now she made a room-sized networked version. It's got a lot of stuff about wiring, I'm powering, video. big project. Hey, you want to show the video? It's a one-minute video, so I think we should show it. Okay, do you want to show the end video after? Or is there or just which one? Okay, let's just do the Four Seasons video, and then we'll come back. Yeah. We'll do the other guy. She did two guides. Yeah, the tree, we're going to show the video next week. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, so let's do this one, and then next week we'll do the tree one. Okay. Got it. Take it away, Aaron. Erin's guide is the, she's so good at the details, like how to make things look really good. So especially if you're an engineer like me, who's like, I, I soldered together and now I'm done. She shows you how to put the finishing touches to make it look really beautiful. And then the user interface to make it like really friendly for people to interact with. So that's like Erin's guides, they're amazing in that kind of skill set development. Um, she also did a tree with animated eyes uh, using the monster mask. We'll show the video yeah. next week for that. Video for that next week. Yeah. Um, from Carter uh, for uh, th um, Thanksgiving. That's later. For Valentine's Day, we've got a, uh, a two versions, two ways. Uh, Valentine's heart, if you love these hearts that have uh, words on them. First, you can write some code, and they'll just randomize different hearts. You have different text and colors, and it'll, it'll make this display for you. Also, uh, he has a version where you can use Bluetooth, and on your phone, you type the message, and it will show up, on, and then it'll save it so you can give a custom Valentine to someone uh, using your Circuit Playground, Bluefruit, and Gizmo. JP um, did the Bluetooth cycling and cadence sensor. So this is... Um, you know, we're building on our Bluetooth successes. So what's interesting about this guide is it now is reading from two sensors. We did the heart rate sensor, which is one. You're reading just the heart rate. This one is reading cadence and speed. And that's actually two different sensors on a bicycle. One's on the wheel and one's on the crank. And um, this version of the code just shows like how many cranks it's done. And then the next version coming in a week or two is we'll actually take that data and then figure out how fast you're going or how fast the crank is going. So you'll have to do some little bit of math um, with that data 
um, because the, the sensors don't know how big your wheel is and then you'll just have to do the multiplication. So we'll take that a step further when we do Piloton. Um, Richard A. did a making a Pi Portal user interface with Display.io. If you want to add buttons, text, labels, um, all sorts, you know, changing colors, um, animations and, and images, bit, disk bitmaps and non-disk bitmaps, um, this guide will show you how to make an interface uh, using Display.io, which is our um, very simple but uh, powerful way of making interfaces on CircuitPython boards, especially ones that don't have a ton of memory. And then, uh, last but not least, Don Pedro did a NeoPixel heart necklace. We're going to show that video shortly. Um, this is a half milling slash laser cutter, half 3D printing project using an itsy bitsy and a bunch of NeoPixel strips to make a cool wearable LED heart. Okay, we had a lot of guys this week. We Ooh, did. 2,130. I know. It's out of control. Okay. Let's keep moving along. Moving right along. Okay. Factory footage. Adafruit Factory, take it away. Factory footage without a look outside our window, which is all under construction. This is fun. And not to, you know, you know, when anyone says not to belabor the point, they just go on the blade. So I'm, this is Disney. They're moving across the street. I'm sure they get every benefit for being multi gajillionaire company, and they get benefits for being mouse based or something, but we've gotten nothing for being a woman owned company. But I can tell, I can tell they're getting breaks. I could tell. Mousy breaks? Mouse breaks. Okay. Anyways, um, 3D printing. No and Pedro are going to show you how they made the heart project. And yeah. then we're going to go right to the 3D printed Mandalorian armor project. I like how it's just so all like Star Wars. It's all Star Wars all the time. Um, and we'll see you on the other side. What's up folks, in this project we're building an LED heart with NeoPixels. This uses black LED acrylic to diffuse the NeoPixels inside a 3D printed case. We were inspired to use this material by Charlin on Twitter. The heart is made from pieces of strips that are daisy chained to create a custom matrix. This acrylic allows the colors of the LEDs to shine through and it features a nice matte finish. When the LEDs are off, it looks like they disappear, giving this a really cool hidden effect. 
you can change the colors of the LEDs using the Adafruit BLE Connect app for iOS or Android. You can also trigger LED animations like the classic Paint Your Dragon Rainbow Swirl. With the Itsy Bitsy NRF52840, you can easily add BLE to your wearable projects. The board and battery are housed in a separate 3D printed case. We also added a LiPo backpack so you can recharge the battery over USB. A little 3D printed button lets you trigger the reset so you can easily update the firmware. We think this case will work really nice for your next wearable project. You can get the parts to build this project, links are in the description. The 3D printed parts are designed to print without any support material and the components all snap fit. The code for this project is written in CircuitPython and it uses Adafruit's BLD libraries. With CircuitPython, you can easily make updates and quickly iterate on your code. You can change the colors or add your own to the different buttons in the BLE Connect app. We think this is great demo code for folks looking to quickly get their projects up and running. To cut the acrylic, we used the CNC milling machine from Bantam Tools. We needed to make sure our stock fits the spoil board, so we got pre-cut sheets that are 100 by 100 millimeters. This has two sides, one that's shiny and the other one has the matte finish. You'll want to use the shiny side for adhering to the spoil board. Double-sided tape works nicely and should hold well with just three strips. We used an eighth inch single flute upcut spiral bit. This one's really nice for plastics and aluminum. Be sure to check out the learn guide for a full step-by-step -step tutorial on building this project. For more CNC projects, you can check out our Milling Monday playlist. We generated the tool paths in Fusion 360 and set up the job with the Bantam Tools software. I used the 2D contour to carve out the outline of the heart cover. With a step down of 0.2 millimeters, it only takes about eight minutes to cut out a piece. To clean up the snowflakes, I used a tiny tube style vacuum attachment. I like to use alcohol to soften the adhesive and then a palette knife to get underneath the stock. I offset the Z-axis by 0.2 millimeters so I wouldn't scuff up the bed because I totally did on the first try. We think this is really nice material for LED projects. We think this is a really sweet CNC milling project, but you could also use a laser cutter. We cut a strip of mini skinny NeoPixels with a total of 46 LEDs. To create the LED matrix, we cut them up into individual pieces and lay them out to form the shape of a heart. A large piece of packaging tape will allow us to stick them together so they stay in place. We needed to make sure that all of the pieces are nicely lined up with each other. We put together a wiring diagram so you can reference that and get the correct placement. With all of the LEDs lined up in place, we can then trim away any excess tape with scissors. You'll need to remove bits of tape to expose the solder pads on the end of each row. To connect the strips together, we measured and cut pieces of silicone cover ribbon wire. Each end of the strips are tinned with a bit of solder and connect to the pieces of ribbon wire. We made sure to reference our wiring diagram to get the correct polarity for each connection. The first NeoPixel in the chain is wired to a longer piece of wire that will act as the necklace. The three connections from the LED matrix are wired to pin number 5, voltage, and ground. The Itsy Bitsy LiPo backpack can then be wired next. Cut the trace for the switch with a pair of flush cutters using the mounting hole as an anchor. The LiPo backpack is wired to the fat, ground, and USB pins on the Itsy Bitsy board. Two wires are soldered to the switch pins on the LiPo backpack. You'll want to tin the leads on the slide switch with a bit of solder. Solder the wires to the middle pin in either the far left or right. The Itsy Bitsy board snap fits into the case and is held in place with tabs. The LiPo backpack is press fitted into place and the slide switch fits into a little built-in holder. A piece of NinjaFlex can be used to create the second strap to form our necklace. The wiring and filament are inserted into the slits on the side of the case. This 500 milliamp LiPo battery can then be connected and should give us a few hours of runtime. The little button is placed over the reset and then the cover can be press fitted on top. Snap fits on the side of the case will keep the cover nicely secured in place. The LED matrix is fitted inside the heart case with the wiring and filament fitted through the slits. After that, the acrylic can then be fitted on top and there you have it. We really like the look of this project and think it's a great example of mixing 3D printing with CNC milling.
Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. That is the way. So if you want to learn how to make all this stuff and more, watch every single Wednesday. 3D Hangouts with Noah and Pedro. Excellent work, Noah and Pedro. Those were great videos, in particular, the hard one. OK, uh, don't forget, codes XCHAPTERS, 10% off an native fruit store, all the way up to 11, 59 PM Eastern time. New, 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 new. Yeah. OK. So as we do new products, I have to do a reminder every single week because we will run out of beta boxes we if you will. haven't already. Um, you heard about it. You don't want to fear missing out. It's the biggest fear that everyone has now of missing out. So don't miss out. Number don't have one best you can quarterly solve this. electronic subscription box. You can solve this with a trip to adabox.com. But very soon when we run out, it'll say, sorry, we ran out. Yeah, once we run out, we run out. Yeah. Okay, what do we got? Okay, starting off, we've got this screen. So 1.3 inch color TFT screen. We're actually using it in a bunch of products, including the Clue and also uh, the TFT bonnet we're showing off. And uh, maybe you want to make something with this display or maybe you crack the display and you want to replace it. We have replacement displays available. Um, we even have a part number if you want to use it in your design. You, uh, look at the part number. We put it in the technical description and uh, purchase that to match it up with this display. It's a beautiful color TFT IPS display. Keep watching in the video and we'll show more of it. Okay, next up. Next up, from SparkFun, we are stocking their uh, Thing Plus Quick Shield, also known as um, a Quick or Stem QT Feather Wing. They like to use Thing Plus, but um, it's also a Feather Wing, uh, which is fine. I, you can call me. whatever you want. Call whatever you want. It's a feather. <laughs> Here's what it is. Um, so uh, with these, you get uh, four JST SH connectors connected to the I squared C port. You can see the power ground and I squared C pins labeled. Uh, these are the standard pins on every feather. So unless somebody's making something that's not feather compatible, you will plug this in on top and connect all sorts of sensors to it, like seen here. So hold on, I will plug this in. So what I like is that there's four plugs, and even though um, our Stemma QT boards and Quick boards are often uh, chainable, like you can connect another I2C device on the other side. What's nice about this is that you can you can connect as many as you like. Maybe I'll back this off a little bit and then I'll focus and focus lock. Okay, so um, here we've got like a humidity sensor. Here we've got accelerometer gyro. And over here, you know, I connected an OLED. So it's all plug and play. You know, once you, you do have to solder um, headers onto the feather wing and then plug it into your feather. In this case, I have a, I think I have a NRF52840 feather or something here. Um, but then you could plug and play all of our sensors and displays to make really easy sensor outputs. And this is an Arduino, but of course it works in CircuitPython as well. Great addition to the Featherwing family. It has been renamed as the barbecue um, thing wing. Yes. It's, it's a, a barbecue thing wing. It's a barbecue thing wing. And so it has been said. I love barbecue wings. All right. So that's in the store now. That's okay. right. Next up. Next up. We have a little bit of an update to this cable. This is a USB-C FTDI cable. And what I initially wanted to stock was a cable with five volt power and three volt signal. We were sent ones with five volt power, and five volt signal. Now, as of February 12, 2020, they are now five volt power, three volt signal, but they're five volt compliant. So you can use them with either five volt or three volt, volt um, signal devices, such as like a, Pro trinkets or like Arduino compatibles or connecting to a, um, 
a Wi-Fi router or whatever, uh, and it's USB-C, so it's great for people who have modern computers that you have USB-C ports. You plug it in, it's very durable, and you get the standard FTDI pinout. Okay, next up. Um, we have the FOMU. We've been carrying the Tomu from um, Zobs, and now we have if you like FOMU. Tomu, you're like FOMU. If you like Tomu, you're gonna love. <laughs> Look how this is. This is bananas. Look it's how tiny so this is. So tiny. So this is a USB port sized FPGA development board, and it even runs. I think either my, MicroPython or CircuitPython or both. Yes. Uh, you can even see it gets like a, a little bit of uh, flash on there. Um, if you want to program FPGAs, it's ridiculous. And you want to fit in your. USB port. I also, they will do mention though it's kind of early. Like for example, there's these capacitive touchpads and they're still under development. They haven't quite gotten that part of it. But I think if you want to play around with FPGA development and like you don't want to have to haul around a big kit, it's got like a USB bootloader. You can you know again it just fits in your USB port and you're ready to FPGA anywhere you want. So um, check out the specs. It's really long. I didn't memorize all of them. But um, Zobs has done such a great job with this. I know yeah. he's been working really hard in the last like year or two on this project. Okay. Next up, the Art of Electronics X chapters. Now, so people who didn't even think the Art of Electronics third edition was going to come out, well, now we've got even more. This is a beautiful hardcover update cool. with even more from Horowitz and Hill. Um, it's real. It's like a slim version, but um, lots of stuff. Like they couldn't even fit everything in. So there's a more, and it's beautiful. It's, it's got that same, uh, you know, layout. I've got the my. Art and Electronics t-shirt on in celebration of the X Chapters release. Um, more stuff. I mean, like, this is all the stuff that they don't even teach you in class, by the way. Like, you don't learn this in school. Um, and uh, I really love the Art Electronics 3rd edition. I think it was a really big update. Yep. Uh, we just got these today. Um, so I think I'm we're, excited. like, the first ones home. to have them. Yeah, we might be. I'm going to take these home and uh, read through it. But uh, knowing Hearts and Hell, this is good stuff, they said. Rail to rail op amp warnings, current feedback, low noise, ultra isolated power, high voltage, a lot of high voltage stuff in here. Uh, PWM for DC, B PWM for DC motors, a myth demolished. I have to know what that is because I do that all the time. Anatomy of a counterfeit iPhone charger. This is a good time. Good reading. I always think about if we were to have contact with a uh, alien civilization, what uh, people will we have try to interact with them with their technology and what yeah. what resources will we give them if we could communicate and I always think like if I needed like if something landed like I want Bunny and you to reverse engineer it. and I thought like what's the if it, but if there was like a, a some resources about like some of our technology it's Horowitz and Hill yeah I'll just say Art that. of Electronics like here you go, go for this, it. Is, this is as good as it gets for us right now this is it this is it if you can really learn this and you can make all the stuff that we're you know working on okay, okay. next up Look, I think about these things. It's, it's important has to. that you, somebody has to. Yeah, okay. Okay, so next up we have a pretty big product update, big enough that I wanted to uh, sort of announce it as a new product. So we've had this FT232H breakout board for a very long time. It was lovely, but I wanted to give it a little bit of a makeover. So um, the thing that's important for people who have been using these, and we sell a lot of them, and so, so I was very careful revising this, it is the same physical size and the mounting holes are in the same locations and it's pinout compatible. However, I added two more pins. So where there were no pins, there is now a three volt pin and a ground pin because a lot of people were asking, hey, I really want a three volt output. And there's a three volt regulator on there that gives you 500 milliamps. So if you want to use this with, if you've been using this FTDI breakout with three volt logic devices, you no longer need a separate regulator. It's now built in and you can just get it off of those extra two pins. Um, otherwise, the schematic is the same and the pinout is the same. We've uh, moved the micro USB over to USB-C because if we're going to do a makeover, you might as well, as well. update to USB-C. Um, so that's very handy. And best of all, because a lot of people were using these with I2C devices, we made it much easier to use with I2C devices by adding an I2C mode switch. So for I2C, if you've used these before, you know you have to connect D0 and D1 or D1 and D2, I don't remember. They have to connect them together. And it's kind of annoying because you have to use a jumper and people forget and they're like, why is my I2C not working? So we now have a switch. And if you want to use it in I2C mode, you flip the switch and it jumpers those two pins for you so you don't have to remember. And there's also now a, as you may remember from five minutes ago, a STEM QT or quick connector. So like that sensor that I showed, this pressure sensor, um, you can now plug it in directly. So there's no solder required. Does it work required. with the barbecue? red thing hot wing it works with barbecue hot wings <laughs> well it, you would have connected the hot wing because 
it's both trying to control the I squared C. Got it. But if you want to connect, you know, we have um, you know these OLED displays that have okay. the quick connectors. We have OLED. Got we have it. sensors. Um, we have like thermocouple, whatever, whatever you want over I squared C. You plug and play, and then USB C to your computer. And um, Carter did a really amazing job in the last few months, kind of in ex expectation that this would come out soon. Um, he wrote a really great guide on using all of our Circuit Python libraries um, and Blinka, which is what we call the, the platform for running Circuit Python on C Python. So when you plug this into your computer on your desktop, Mac, Windows, and Linux, you can use all like 200 ish of our Circuit Python libraries to control various sensors and devices and actuators and motor controllers and all that good stuff with the FT232H. A lot of people also like it for debugging. You can do um, GPIO control, you can do open OCD, uh, JTAG control. Um, it does SPI at very high speeds, which is quite nice. You can use this to drive a little screen. It's, uh, you can even use it to control NeoPixels. We got that working. A little bit of a hack on the SPI port, but it is possible. So we really like the FT232H, so much so that we wanted to give it a little bit of a uh, remake over, and we did so. I think people will like it. Um, if you've been using it for a while, no fear, you'll be able to use it just the same as before. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay, we also have, uh, last week we forgot to, not forgot, but we, we ran out of time to add this uh, pirate audio version. We have the line-out version, the speaker version, the built-in speaker version, now we have the headphone jack version. So this version has a headphone, it has an I2S amplifier and then a headphone um, amplifier as well. So it can drive um, large headphones, especially ones that are like uh, 16 ohm or 300 ohm headphones. So you can make kind of your own little portable music player. Uh, and Pimerony has great code to display album art with this. It works with Spotify, it has all these buttons. So a lovely little add-on for your Raspberry Pi. Okay, and the start of the show tonight, besides our community, our team, and you lady, it is this. Yes, we also, it, coincidentally, very similar looking board, but this one doesn't have an audio amplifier. This is our uh, 1.3 inch TFT bonnet. So it's, it's simpler, it doesn't have audio, it has a little joystick and it has some buttons. And uh, I can show on the overhead, we, um, hold on, make a little bit of room here. I'm gonna clear up my FT232H demo. Um, we have a little kernel module for it, so you know I can uh, use it. Oh, hold on, my keyboard got unplugged. There you go. Pardon me. So I can use this um, as a terminal, or you can use it with Python to display graphics or animations on here. You've got a five-way joystick, so this joystick goes up, down, left, right, and in, and then you've got two buttons. I wouldn't use it for gaming because it's it's very small and maybe not that comfortable, but for very let's, basic let's go to like a website or something. user interfaces. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing uh, that was fun is I was like, oh, you know, you know, I, I have Wi-Fi in this Raspberry Pi Zero W, so let's install Lynx, and then you can go to Google. It's going to say like you have 18 cookies you have to allow, but do you want to be tracked? I know, but then you We're can going use. To track. We're going to they have a Lynx interface, yeah. so you know you can um, you know you could put graphics on this, but the text it's text is, you know you can actually see it, and then uh, I can look for me, Google search. It's going to say, hey, you have more cookies. One cookie. One second. There's like seven. Do you want a cookie? But then hey, check it out. You can All look right. look up stuff. So um, it's a you know it's a full text interface uh, you can use, or again, you can use it with Python. You have two ways of using it, either as like a kernel module where it's a terminal um, or a graphical. Uh, you can mirror HDMI onto it, but again, it's going to be very small graphics. So you could use this as a very, very tiny Pico 8 player, I think, um, but it is a very small screen just to see my fingers, how yeah. teeny it is. High resolution, but small, but could be really good for like user interface projects, robotics it's projects, cool. wireless projects. So this is, uh, yeah, the TFT bonnet. And um, if you don't want the joystick and buttons, we also have the Pi, the Mini Pi TFT, which is just the screen available in the store as well. Let's get products. Want to do recap? Recap. Recap. We've got, if you would like to use it in your own designs or replace a broken one, a 1.3 inch, color TFT IPS display, 240 by 240. Same display that we use in all our 1.3 inch TFT projects, so a great little plug and play replacement. 
Red Hot Thing Wing. Red Hot Thing Wing. This Thing Plus Quick Shield is also known as a Stomach UT or Quick Feather Wing. It works with all feathers uh, because we have the I2C and power pins in the same location. You can plug and play any of our sensors, OLED displays, motor drivers, what have you. Uh, you get four slots. Uh, an update to our FT232, FT sorry, FTDI232 cable. Uh, this is a USB to serial converter cable. Um, we used to have this with five volt power, five volt logic. Now it's five volt power, three volt logic, but the three volt logic is five volt compliant. So it's perfect for use with pretty much everything that you can power with five volts and gives you three volt or five volt logic. The FOMU is the update to the TOMU. This is a little FPGA development board that fits into your USB port. It's open source. It's a great little like USB bootloader friendly FPGA board. Uh, perfect if you just wanna like mess around with FPGAs and you don't wanna carry out a big dev kit. Just put it in your USB port and you're ready to rock. The X chapter from Art of Electronics is all the stuff that didn't fit into, I mean, I mean it was huge, the book was huge. There's even more that they wrote for the third edition of the Art of Electronics and now it's available separately as the X chapters, chock full of all the goodies that overflowed from that book into this book. We've done a refresh on the FT232H breakout. Uh, this is a USB to I2C, GPIO, SPI, JTAG, what have you, converter. Uh, we've added USB-C, so uh, instead of micro USB, so that's now ready for modern computers. We have added a three volt and ground pin in addition because people wanted a three volt pin and it has a regulator on it to give you 500 milliamps of current so you can power your projects directly. Um, for people using I2C a lot, there's now an I2C mode switch. Switch it on uh, to short those two pins together for I2C mode and then there's a stemmer or quick QT connector and you can plug and play any of the sensors we just showed you uh, for quick USB to I2C use and we've got CircuitPython libraries for almost everything you could possibly want. From Pimeroni, we've got the Pirate Audio headphone output, uh, in addition to the speaker, built-in speaker, line out, this one has a headphone driver, great for your big cans. And finally, the Adafruit 1.3 inch TFT bonnet. Uh, this gives you a 240 by 240 pixel color display with joystick and two buttons. It's great for making little interfaces, plugs on any Raspberry Pi. You can either use it with Python uh, to draw images and animations, or you can use it with our kernel module. It shows up as a serial terminal. And that was new products. Okay, so folks, don't forget the code is X Chapters. Now you know why. 10% in the store all the way until 59 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, why we do a new top secret thing? Yeah. Um, head over to Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. Start answering and asking questions. You can do both. Um, and we'll uh, start doing questions shortly. But let's do some top secret. I got one thing. It's the. Uh, Clue running this very cool plotter demo that Lady Ada is working on. So we did a little video and I'm going to play it for you right now. Go for it. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, this is a demo of my plotter code that I wrote for Arduino on the Clue board. It's Microbit Monday. Clue is microbit shaped. So this is it plotting temperature. It's kind of boring. And then this is pressure. So as I move this up and down, you can actually see the pressure changes. Uh, humidity is a little buggy. I gotta figure that out. Light is interesting, so you can see if I shine a light, it plots the light. It actually does um, automatic um, ranging, so as it uh, yeah. does the, the plotting, like the range changes, which is kind of cool. Um, I also did color, so like I've got this green thing here. If I put it over it, you can see red, green, and blue uh, traces for the red, green, and blue uh, components. Yep. And uh, proximity, so as I move closer and farther away. There you go. Lots of cool plotting on the clue. And that's the top secret for this week, Back in the Vault. Coming Thank soon you. to a guide yeah. near you. Okie dokie. So questions, please go to adafruit.it slash discord, and uh, we'll answer them. Yeah. That's where we're at. See some um, questions. Cool. Okay. Rockin'. Uh, someone wanted to know um, how do you program the um, FOMU? Like how, it, how do you? It has a USB bootloader. I'll say I haven't used it, but I really trust Zobs to have done an excellent job. 
So um, check the documentation. I'm sure it's well documented. Cool. There's probably a command line tool that you run um, that will put into bootloader mode, and then you can load uh, the FPGA like bitstream code in. Got it. Um, <clears throat> then someone wanted to know. Uh, I'll just hop around. Yeah, closed captioning. So uh, YouTube has live closed captioning I don't sometimes. Know. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and we also have like electronic content, so it doesn't always get the words. Okay, but um, try again later. Sometimes yeah. it comes in later. And then someone had asked me this um, earlier, but I, I wanted to save it for um, question and answer time. So, yeah, if you can um, find the playlist on YouTube for show and tell, yeah, you can sort of kind of find past projects. Someone was trying to find a specific project from a, from a show and tell. Yeah. It's a, it's kind of hard. There's no, you know, it's 2020 and there's all this machine learning stuff, but there really isn't a way to just type words and, and search what was said inside of a video. We're just not yeah, there yet. Yeah, I know. We're not there. They're, they're, I think they're working on it, but yeah, we're not there yet. Okay. Um, let's see. I think this person does this every week. They want to know about the PIR key. Yeah, there's there's absolutely no TA. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why. Why? They, well, I guess you know I'll, I'll look in the camera. I'll say you know sometimes people are just mean and they they know that the answer is like we don't have an ETA, but they say they do it every week. I'm never going to change the answer. Yeah, so you can answer. I mean, they can ask, but it's never going to change it, from no ETA because I never give you. Yeah, it, you'll notice I never give you ETAs for anything because yeah. I can't control a lot of stuff. I think it's a weird thing that some people do. They're just like they like to poke. Anyways. So if, you, if, if this is the same person who does this everywhere in every chat every single week, stop. Um, <laughs> no, really. Like, yeah, I'm not, what's I'm, the... I'm not asking it's anymore. It's probably been like two years now. Yeah, like I I've, I've see all the chats and across yeah. all the different chats. It's, I think it's the same person. So yeah. anyways, I'm not asking anymore. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, Let okay. other people ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. Be mean. Okay. Uh, next up. Um, or could we do a bundle deal for the... Um, uh, the X chapters, like where you get. Here, here's the thing. I gotta tell you, we make almost no money when we sell books. We we pretty much sell them at cost. So there's yeah. no. I was mentioning this. There, there's free. You know, you can get a free Circuit Playground Express, or you get yeah. a free Promo Proto. No, they meant a bundle. Like, can you buy both at the same time? Like, you you can buy each in yeah. the store, but I, there wouldn't be any discount. Yeah. We so we basically get them at the same cost. Someone so someone told. Uh, I think it was Mr. Certainty told the story about. Um, getting a counterfeit version so they got an art of electronics from amazon and it was counterfeit yeah now this is the real thing we get this and from uh, Cambridge. yeah and so i could tell you as someone who's been running a co company a long time with you um amazon has no incentive to do the right thing yeah they have never done that and they don't do that and they're not going to do it until there's probably some type of regulation on them people who need a textbook they get a counterfeit thing or it's like a fake or like it's just garbage in the pages they just don't care. Yeah. And they're just big enough to just be like, nah, you know, until they're forced to do something. So, But we really like supporting yeah. Cambridge University. So I'll say this. One thing for sure, we get the books directly from the publisher. Always. So if you get them from us, you know 100% for sure it is not a third-party seller that's and this doing happened, counterfeits. And this happened a lot to um, one of the uh, companies that we stock a lot of. Um, uh Oh, what's the name? Scratch, not, not Scratch. What's the name of the company that was had this happen a lot to them? They carry their their technical books. Oh, I can't believe I'm forgetting. No starch. This. No starch. No, I was like, no scratch. No starch press. We carry a bunch of their books, and yeah, they were like, he's like, yeah. thank you for carrying it direct yeah. from us. I mean, I get it. Like, I I understand. Like, Amazon's a really sweet deal. Like, there's yeah. a lot of things that are super cheap, and then you get Prime, and like that money comes comes from somewhere, yeah. either human capital or labor or time, but like they've really made it so. You know, the default, everyone expects free shipping. They also want everything super cheap. And we all have a choice. Like, yeah, maybe, like, our, maybe you'll pay $2 more uh, if you buy it from us. Like, maybe. Or it'll be the same price. Or Amazon will be interested that people are buying it and they'll lower their prices. They did that with, like, diapers.com. Yeah. Um, they would, like, set it up so uh, they would just look at whatever prices are in, like, diapers.com until eventually, like, diapers.com couldn't make the price any lower. And then Amazon's like, okay, fine, we're going to buy you now. They also, I mean, I, I can't speak for Cambridge Press, but I do know that they go to publishers and they say, you have to give us bigger discounts than anybody else or we won't stock your book. And so, yeah. so you know, we have sometimes, we stock some books where literally the price we get from the publisher, I say, hey, you know, that's actually more expensive than what Amazon is selling it for. And they say, yeah, like Amazon bullied us 
essentially into a, giving them a really good deal that we can't give anybody else. So that's it. So it's, it, you know, this is we we stock books because we support. I don't want to say we we definitely stock books because we support people and we'll stock them as long as they're selling. Yeah. But it's it's something we do to support. Um, it's it's definitely not one of the things that drives the company. No, we, <laughs> no, we, we put in books in, our, in the store to help the author. Yeah. Um, people we know, we did an interview with Art of Electronics. We do guides and projects. Yeah, we around. also, like, we understand there are actually some people who are like, I don't buy stuff from Amazon. Yeah. And, like, I admire that because, like, it's hard not to buy stuff from Amazon. Like, we're all kind of, like, buying stuff from Amazon. Yeah. It's kind of just happened. Okay. Um, so, cool. All right. And if that person in Discord was not the person who asked every single week about PR key, um, good. Thank you. But for the person who has been doing that every time in every chat, stop. <laughs> this is your warning. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. I think. Oh, someone posted up the FOMO workshop. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And it's good stuff. Okay. All right. Those are questions. That's it. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway. Question is, what to give well, away? Well, do you want to, I mean... Give away our electronics? Let's give away the since we're talking about this. Do you want a genuine genuine <laughs> chapter X, Art of Electronics? The, the X chapters. X chapters. This is a really sweet book. Okay. Especially if you're an analog engineer, but also digital engineers might find this very interesting. But a really good book. We will send you out one copy if you can follow the well, rules. Well, 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 okay. First rule is you can't ask Phil <laughs> you can't. about the PR. No, no, it's just that the people, no, I'm they, adding it. they flood the chats I know. I'm across all the social things. And it's just like... I know. That's yeah, why I'm adding yeah, it. You okay. can't have been that person. <laughs> you're, you're, you're blocked. Sorry. Okay. Person who did that, you can't win. I make the rules. Oh, that's right. I'm Lady Ada. You make the rules. Uh, well, number two, you can't have won before. <laughs> this is only one winner from my lifetime. So if you've won something before on the show, you can't win again. The first person to call the magical phone line that will be put on the screen in a moment. And answer the questions, three, will be the winner. The questions three are what's your name and what you're calling from and a project you want to work on or uh, you're working on or you want to work on or you can tell me your favorite memory about Horts and Hill <laughs> and the Art of Electronics. All right. Bonus. And uh, when you call, I'm going to let the phone from Radio Shack ring twice. Yeah, we'll, we'll have it on the other right yeah. yeah, hold on. And then, yeah, so call number. I'm going to pick it up after it rings twice and say ahoy, ahoy. That's how you know it's me. Yeah. All right. All I right. should say ahoritz, ahoritz. Right. Oh, yeah, someone also, there was another rule that, so, that we have now. You can't, you can't bug our team when you're trying to order and say, like, I want a specific color board because we have some green boards yeah. right now because there's a worldwide pandemic. <laughs> we, yeah, have a, we have a diverse supply chain. I know so there's some boards are green and some boards are black. I know there's a lot of rules, but basically... If there are, like, like, two or three rules. If you're, a cool, if you're a cool person, <laughs> this isn't going to affect out of, you. Out of, all, like, if we're, eight, like, 15 years in, those are, like, they're, like we have, Look, like, three rules. The rules are, like, pretty, yeah. pretty chill. But this yeah, isn't, like, the end of RoboCop where, like, he had too many prime directors. If you're a chill person, can follow the rules, call this number, answer the three questions, have one before, don't yeah. ask about the hierarchy, don't bug us about if we have green PCBs, you'll win this fabulous copy of the Art of Electronics X Chapters. Okay. Let me put, yeah, seriously. Okay. Ooh. Oh, oh. I was about to type the number in. But you type the number, but okay, okay, hold on. Ringing, ringing, ringing. There you go. Okay. Let's, let's do okay. This. All right, pick it up. Yeah. Ahoy, ahoy. Hi. All right, congratulations. You've called Ask Engineer, and you're close to winning a free book. All you have to do is tell us your name and where you're calling from. Uh, it's Steve from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Okay, well, hey, Steve. congratulations, Steve, from Pennsylvania. You have won a fabulous copy of The Art of Electronics X Chapters. Ooh, fabulous. Cool. Yeah, I don't have the original, I don't have the uh, mother volume, but uh, it's like a really cool start. Well, this is a great way to begin, uh, and it's nice and heavy. You can also hold down some things. All you have to do to claim your prize is email support at adafruit.com, S U P P O R T, at adafruit.com. Say it's hey, Steve from Pennsylvania. Please ship me out a product number 4360. Yeah, the Art of Electronics X Chapter. And they will send that to Pennsylvania, and it'll get there in a day or two. It's wonderful. What's a project you're working on, you want to work on, or your favorite history story about the Art of Electronics? Tell me you won this book. <laughs> WS 2811 uh, Matrix is uh, like 
uh, display. Cool. It's like big LED displays. You're getting ready for like Christmas. You're going to be like, I'm going to be so sad. <laughs> yeah, I want to do it like all year round. Like I'll actually be almost a live interactive. It's a display where I perform the uh, effects on the screen kind of live, like a like an organ Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's like a light Perfect. light effect, light effects for for music. All right, well, it, you're you're at the perfect place. So we're gonna send you out this book, and uh, when you when you build your cool pipe organ LED wall, come on by show and tell, show us off. I want to see this thing. It sounds neat. Yeah, I'd love to get on a show and tell when I get something. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Steve. Don't forget to email supportagefruit.com to claim your prize. Excellent. All right. Have a great night. Bye, Steve. All right. All right. Oh, a little shout out. Charles from Wonder Unit. Hi. Um, you know, I, I'm corresponding um, with Charles and a couple other people, uh, Thinko. We're, uh, we're actually, I didn't know we were going to be filming something since we are using a uh, storyboarder thing. By the way, I'll, I'll, I'll email you later. Okay. It's cool. We want, so it's this cool tool that you can um, set up like the scenes in advance. And yeah. then, um, we have an Oculus Quest so I can like move little people around um, and we can set up their shot scenes. Then he's working on this. Um, Thing, it's like a smart clapper like a, yeah I don't, have, I don't have my ink i don't have the like one that doesn't connect to the internet or ink yeah what is it it's it's like it's it's in the film and stuff okay um uh, but anyways i'm gonna try that out all okay. right cool all right so uh that's our show for tonight thank you everybody and thank yeah. you horton hill and thank you transistor man and then don't forget also you can pick up a mosfet girl t-shirt to match your transistor man t-shirt and your electronics go to crowd supply and search for mosfet girl t-shirt yeah okay that's our show tonight thank you everybody all right thanks um, everybody uh, we'll see Thank everybody you, next week, uh, 8 p.m. for Ask an Engineer, 7.30 p.m. for Show and Tell. Tomorrow, JP's show, JP's workshop, John Park's workshop, is at 4 p.m. No, and Pedro's show, 11 a.m. on Wednesday. Uh, shout out to all our Adafruit community members um, and all the folks who support us. Don't forget the code is... Chapter next here. chapters. Chapters here. And then... Um, Special thanks to all of our Adafruit team members here. Who's, that, who's live? Who's here? Who's well, in Slack, I just want to check and see who's going to see us. I will find out in a second. Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? It is, yeah, Takara. Thanks, Yeah, Takara. hey, thanks, Takara. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see everybody. Holding down. Yeah, holding the fort down. And uh, thank you, everybody, in all the different chats and all the different things. And tune in. Except for that one guy. Well, no. No, I, you know what? I think we've come. See, I said, people never say what they want. I just went around and just like, hey, like, kind of stop. Like, come on. Like, every week? Like, every week? Um, and, uh, because you know you don't want to you don't want to not look forward to something. That's right. It's like oh the comments are here. Yeah. yeah. So so no I think we have a good understanding now. I think we've come to a um, an agreement. I think I think this is we're gonna see this is how world peace starts. I want my neon sign to say <laughs> don't be that guy. Yeah. Or or you know what you know what's cool is be that guy but in the good way. In be that way. person. Be that leader of the bright sparkling light on the horizon. People are like you know what I kind of want to be like that. For the good reasons. All right, let's go get tacos. Yeah. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Here's your moment of zener.